It's good to see you, my friend. Let's welcome back to the show former Deputy Assistant Attorney General John Yu and uh, former Assistant U.S. Attorney Andrew McCarthy. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate your expertise. Sure. First to you, Andrew, and I'm going to get to you, John, too. What do you both make, first to you, Andrew, what do you make of former President Trump invoking the, uh, the constitutional Eighth Amendment violations about excessive fines? Well, it's one of the claims that he ought to make. Um, you know, there are other ones as well. They didn't get a jury trial. Um, the, the case is, I think, a, a, the major thing about it is that it's a big mismatch between the wrong that they were able to prove, which is whether he inflated his assets, and the astronomical penalty. So I'm not surprised that they uh, are highlighting that because I think that's, in terms of having the public understand what happened here, that's the best point they can make. What do you think, John? The excessive fines claim is interesting. Uh, the Supreme Court has usually looked to that clause to limit punitive damages when a court's actually that's what happened to Trump in his defamation case when the court says you owe a million and then we're going to tack on a hundred million to punish you. This law is so strange and unusual that doesn't require to show anyone was harmed. Trump might go in and say the whole three hundred and fifty million dollars is punitive. It's not really to compensate anybody. So the whole thing's an excessive fine. I think that's a really interesting claim. He might get to the Supreme Court on it. There's very few cases that have ever got to the court like this one. So, so he could, on this alone, could go to the Supreme Court over the Eighth Amendment? Andrew, what do you think? Well, he's got a long way to go because he's only been before a New York trial court. So he's got to run the gauntlet of the New York appellate process. And I do think he may get some relief there in terms of the dollar amount of the of the of the claim, which is just really uh, exorbitant compared to what they proved he did. As John just pointed out, uh, there's no victim here, but it's such a peculiar statute. It, they really applied to him a statute that belongs in a consumer fraud case, not a case where you have sophisticated financial actors on both ends of the transaction. Um, so I think it was 70 years was the reporting I heard that this statute has never been used against anyone in Trump's position until now. Yeah, and that was the Associated Press finding that over 70 years of court cases. When Andrew just said, John, AP said they couldn't see anything similar to what's going on now. So Letitia James, you know, the, the argument about not having to find a victim here under this New York law, John, uh, New York AG Letitia James said, this was, quote, not a victimless crime, that the extent of the fraud was staggering. There is this kind of argument that you now hear New York State making. They weren't making it earlier. It's actually something like uh, insider trading cases like, that Andy, I think, used to prosecute in the SDNY there in New York. But the idea is uh, the government has an interest to make sure the market works effectively. And so it's going to go after people, even though there's no victim, just to make sure they obey the law. Now, the problem for New York, New York is the financial capital of the country, if not the world. But if those rules get abused by prosecutors, they're going to encourage people to leave, companies to leave, and new financial centers to arise. I could okay. see President Trump and other wealthy people and other big financial corporations moving to Florida if they think that elected prosecutors are going to come after them for no good reason. That's an interesting point. So, Andrew, take this on. So he's being attacked in court. There's multiple court cases. Democrats, again, after they've been, he's being attacked in court, now they're resurrecting this narrative that Trump, without any proof, is a Russian asset, that he's vulnerable to blackmail. You're going to listen to former Speaker Nancy Pelosi bring up the Russian collusion narrative again without evidence, and you're going to listen to former President Trump here. Watch. He who shall not be named, I know Voldemort well, so there's another guy kind of like him. What does he have on Donald Trump that he have to constantly be catering to Putin, telling Putin, go into these countries, NATO countries? What do you think Putin has on him? I mean, it sure seems like something, as you've said a few times, given that he refuses to criticize him, that he seems to be a fanboy yeah. of him. Dollars so maybe I don't know what he has on him, but I think it's probably financial, either something financial he has on him or something on the come. Yeah, well, let me something ask you about that. that. You, you, as you just... I got indicted four times. I have eight or nine trials. 
all because of the fact that I'm, and you know this, all because of the fact that I'm in politics. The Eighth Amendment, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. A lot it of, is a, lot a of form no. of Navalny. It is a form of uh, communism or fascism. What do you think, Andy? I think you need someone like John Smart and me to figure this out because I thought <laughs> that Trump was taking orders from Putin. And now it turns out that Putin is taking orders from Trump. I, I, they got me dizzy. I can't figure it out. Maybe yeah. John knows. What do you, John, final word. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that all of this doesn't really get to the core of the problem with the Biden family, which is even if all this is true, even if the, the Russian intelligence agency snuck in some yeah. bad intel through this Smirnoff guy, there's still lots of tax money that has to be accounted for. In the Biden case, yep. in the with Hunter and James, uh, James yes. and Joe Biden. So we'll say on all these stories is a really interesting race so far. John, you, Andy McCarthy, thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. We appreciate you so much. Thanks for and have thank a good you. evening.